Welcome to Talking Tech, our web series where we talk with Hillsborough teachers about their experience of virtual teaching and learning. I'm Tom McDonald, your host, Technology Integration Coordinator, and today I'm here with Pat Heck. Hi, Pat. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Pat, and I am an eighth grade literacy teacher at the middle school. And Pat, this year I know you've been using a lot of Google Slides in your classroom, so can you tell us a little bit about how you use Google Slides in interactive ways to keep your students engaged? Yeah, definitely. So um, I've used Google Slides in, in a number of different ways. Most of the time as sort of like a way to translate some of the in-person or, or on paper activities into a digital format. So I use Google Slides quite often with vocabulary. I'll start there. Let me just share my screen. So in a normal school year, I do a lot of um, vocabulary warm-ups just to start the class. So I tried to figure out a way to make this digital, like those activities, because I do find them fun and valuable. So just to give you a quick little, I guess, run through of some of the activities. So I have the kids do matching, where they have to match certain emojis or facial expressions with the, the correct vocab word. Would you rather? Some of the more classic ones, like synonyms and antonyms, true and false. And I have some more... Uh, I guess unusual ones. This one, vocab I spy, where they're given a hint and they have to. Basically, I blew up like a one of those classic I spy children's books, and they had to use the vocab words to find certain, you know, images that correspond with the, with the vocab word. And then it usually culminates with a, a larger writing task, where they end up, um, you know, choosing a prompt and they have to use a certain number of vocab words. To, to show understanding. I think it's really beneficial for the kids just because I try to make it have a lot of variety just so it's not the same activity or the same type of activity each day. And then I think anytime, you know, we're teaching vocabulary, consistency and also just, you know, regularity is key. So that I, I try to expose the kids to the vocab words as many times as I can throughout the week. For grammar, I, I actually do something similar. Um, so for, for this, it's, I call it a writing cleanup practice, and I, I basically just was reflecting on three skills that kids really need to, uh, to work on. Um, so I came up with capitalization, homonyms, and possessive nouns. So like the vocab slides, I tried to you know, vary the tasks. Um, some had them getting up and, and, and finding uh, you know, the, the rules or the, the application of these rules around their house. So this one, for example. They had to um, look around their house and find six proper nouns <laughs> um, and put them in the magnifying glasses. And then, like the vocab, some are more standard, right? This one's just like a, an editing activity. And then, you know, as I said, a lot of them culminate with, with you know, longer writing tasks. And I use these as warm-ups, too, um, usually on my, in my writing periods. So we'll do a grammar warm-up and then apply it to the writing. So, yeah, grammar and vocab are similar in that way. Um, and I think this benefits the students, too, just because, again, like in a normal school year, I'd use a lot of, you know, quick paper warm-ups. But here on Google Slides, it, it's a perfect tool for it just because all of the activities are in one spot. It's like if the kids were, you know, punching hole, um, holes into their papers and putting them right in the binders. It's nice in this case because everything's just in one sort of cohesive spot, which I really like. In addition to grammar and, and vocabulary, I also use Google Slides, especially this year, for the writing checklists that I have my students do. So the reason I really like Google Slides in this case is because it's sort of like a one-stop shop. So kids can use my checklist, and I can also give them helpful tools on the sides of the actual slides. So for example, here, uh, one of the items on their checklist is that uh, it says, my quotes were written correctly and include parenthetical citations. So if they're confused on what it should look like, I have models here for them. Um, and that continues on the next page, too. So they're expected to use strong transitions. But if they're not sure about what a strong transition is, we have a list here on the side. And then the same goes with slide three. So they're asked to use vocabulary words and also avoid um, what I call weak words. And if they forget any of those, they are right here on a list on either side of the slide. So that's really great um, about Google Slides is that you can really put a lot of content into one space, which I think you know is really a great feature, especially with virtual learning, where the kids are responsible for so many different documents and slides and, and links. 
Um, so that's a, that's an awesome feature. Right here, the students get their own copies and they can just drag and drop the X's and the checks? Yeah, so every kid gets their own copy and, and they just sort of toggle between this checklist and their essay. And as they, um, you know, complete a task, they simply just drag the green check. And I often tell them to use the X just as a placeholder if they want to go back and, you know, they can do that task later. And then once they complete that task, they can turn the red X into a green check. I know you've also used the uh, slides, the collaborative nature as well. So can you talk a little bit about how you've used that with your classes as well? Sure, yeah. So for my advanced class this year, they did a group symbolism project where they had to uh, come up with outside symbols to represent different characters in this story. Um, so what they did was they you know, broke up different parts. So some kids were doing the drawings. And amazingly enough, this is actually a student did this on a digital whiteboard, <laughs> hand drawn, uh, which I was amazed at. And then, you know, other other students did the writing. And then once they were finished with their, you know, working in their in their small groups, instead of having each group present um, on a Google Meet, what we did instead was I made all of the presentations available for the students. And they went in and they wrote comments. So in the speaker notes here, I left instructions and little tips on what they should include in their comments. And then they, you know, went through, read each other's work, and left feedback for each other. Um, so it was really an excellent way to sort of present without actually presenting in a traditional sense. They still were able to read each other's work, but it was done in sort of like a concise manner. And the comments, instead of being giving oral feedback, they were all written on the side in, in a typed comment. So, so I do have one uh, final way that I've been using Google Slides, and that is with digital notebooks for my reading classes. So, typically, in a in a you know a typical year, my students would jot in physical notebooks as they read. But I did want to be able to see their their progress while reading in in a more manageable way for me and them. So I've used digital notebooks. So the in the first marking period, my students were involved in a social justice unit where they were put into book clubs based on you know novels they wanted to read, and they were given a new task and a teaching point each you know every couple of days, and they expressed you know their knowledge and their insights about their their books in sort of creative ways. And, and again, the, the reason I, I use Google Slides here is just because you can make it look just visually appealing and kids can organize their thinking in a way that is sort of color coded and, and really well organized. And also going back to the, the transfer of, you know, paper to digital, this worked really well with their jots because typically I'd have students jot down insights or, or little notes on you know, physical sticky notes. But here, um, I just created these digital sticky notes, and they jot down quotes. And then in this little thinking bubble, they would explain why they wanted to bring that particular quote to their next book club meeting. So in this sense, it really helped the kids stay organized in their own thinking about reading, as opposed to, you know, having a, a physical notebook and sticky notes jotting out everywhere. Um, it kept things really nice and organized. All right, last thing, Pat. You are known for your incredible handwriting. Oh, uh, I guess, sure. <laughs> yeah, you, you are, I'll tell you that. It's, you're, you're, your hand is like a font. Do you have anything there? Do you have a whiteboard there? You can just do a quick demonstration of your amazing handwriting? Uh, yeah, I mean, I have something written on the board. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, my God. I, I couldn't write that neat if I had all the time in the world. <laughs> well, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> thank you, Pat. You're so talented. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right. Take care. Bye.